everyone and welcome to my amateur radio general license course. For the, those of you who have uh, passed the exam and now have your technician license, congratulations and welcome to the wonderful world of amateur radio. The general li uh, class license extends privileges uh, in the high frequency bands in a, a variety of modes. Um, as a technician you may have noticed limitations in the distances that you may communicate. Uh, but with the aid of a repeater or a digitally linked system, uh, you're sometimes able to communicate to your surrounding communities. Uh, by virtue of being uh, on a, the bands that are 50 megahertz and above, however, uh, your communications are generally line of sight. Uh, the general class license will uh, literally open up the world of amateur radio to you. You can go beyond the repeaters, you can uh, in fact uh, cross the oceans and even with uh, under the uh, modest uh, power signals under the right conditions you can easily uh, get your radio signals to uh, cross the ocean. And you can uh, also uh, learn about uh, other modes that perhaps you haven't experienced uh, or experimented with. Uh, so if you're ready to go uh, from this type of radio here to, or something like this, which is a uh, Yezu uh, FT-818 all-mode, all-band uh, transceiver, which will literally allow you to talk uh, anywhere in the world, uh, as well as your local repeaters. Um, and all modes, um, meaning uh, upper side band, lower side band, even on the, uh, the higher frequencies. So if you're ready to, uh, to put on uh, your big boy or your big girl pants and uh, really jump into the, the world of amateur radio, uh, let's get started. This is the Amateur Radio General Class License Course Lesson 1, Part 1. I'm your instructor, Gary Stevens. And my call sign is KE2GS. That's Kilo Echo 2 Gulf Sierra. I'm often asked uh, what's the best study guide. And honestly, you may not even really need a study guide if you follow this course all the way through. Uh, but if you are a visual learner, uh, these are some recommended uh, sources for study guide. The AARL uh, general Class License Manual, and uh, Gordon West also has a really good uh, book on the General Class License. All through the course, I uh, encourage you to uh, visit some quiz website. Uh, these are the couple of websites that I prefer personally, uh, qrz.com and the uh, AARL Exam Review. Um, these are really good resources, uh, but if you have a preference uh, and one that you prefer, go for it. The way that I've structured this uh, course, it's not about uh, memorizing the, uh, the answers to the questions. It's about understanding the concepts behind the question. Uh, so a lot of sites and a lot of other uh, study materials, they just go for the, the questions and hope that you can remember the answers, but in this course I'm going to try to do my best to uh, explain what the answers mean. This sub-element uh, deals with the uh, Commission's rules. Um, it's all about the rules. It's all about uh, following uh, the FCC uh, guidelines and uh, the uh, recommended practices in amateur radio. So this uh, section of the course will uh, help you understand what those are and what's expected of us. So in part one we're going to talk about uh, the General Crafts uh, control operator frequency privileges, uh, primary and secondary allocations, and we're also going to discuss uh, uh, antenna structure limitations, what good engineering is about, uh, some good practices, uh, beacon operation, and uh, what's permitted uh, prohibited and what's permitted, um, and what we can retransmit. So let's dive right in and uh, talk about the general class control operator frequency privileges 
and the primary and secondary allocations. I encourage you to download the uh, AARL uh, band plan from their website. It's in PDF form. Uh, and it will show you that uh, the 160, the 80, 30, 17, 12, 10 meters are uh, frequencies that uh, general uh, class license holder has uh, full privilege. I encourage you to look at the uh, AARL's webpage uh, where it talks about the band plan as well. It shows different information. Uh, for example, on 30 meters, uh, phone operation is actually prohibited. And you can see the little snippet here that came from that page that uh, uh, RTTY and packet is basically all that's uh, permitted on the 30 meter band. And likewise, on the 30 meter band, uh, transmitting images or facsimiles is uh, prohibited as well. Sixty meters is a really unique uh, channel, it uh, or, or band, because it's um, only in, uh, you're only allowed to transmit in specific channels rather than a f given frequency range. Uh, so there's basically uh, five channels that are available for communications. Noticed in the infinite wisdom of those who uh, created this exam, uh, you're required to know certain frequencies and what is permissible and what is not permissible within these frequencies. Uh, for example, uh, 7.250 megahertz uh, is in the 40 meter band in ITU region 2. The uh, exam question, uh, Gulf 1 Alpha 06, uh, is kind of a trick question. Um, 3900 kilohertz is actually in the 80 meter band, but the upper portion of the band is technically in the 75 meter band. Uh, so in some places on the band plan, you'll see this is within the 80 and then other places in the 75. Another thing you need to remember is that uh, uh, 14,305 kilohertz or 14.305 megahertz is within the uh, general class portion of the 20 meter phone band. So if you haven't noticed, uh, they'd like you to be able to convert from uh, kilohertz to megahertz. So in the uh, 3,000 650 kilohertz uh, portion of the 80 meter band, uh, general class has privileges, uh, but uh, you could also call it uh, 3.65 megahertz. So 21,300 kilohertz or 21.3 megahertz is within the general class portion of the 15 meter band. So they also want you to know kind of a range of uh, frequencies that are within some of the bands. Like in the 10 meter band, there's uh, 28.02, 28.35, and 28.55 megahertz. Uh, they're available to the control operator holding a general class license. A lot of the bands are divided up into segments uh, with specific uh, modes of operation. Some of uh, the lower ends have uh, teletype, radio teletype, and uh, or CW. Uh, you kind of need to look at the band plan and examine it, kind of uh, go over it in your head. Uh, but generally speaking, the upper end of the frequency is available for voice when it is split. Uh, for all these Star Trek fans, uh, you know the Prime Directive uh, that the Federation has? Well, the FCC gives us Prime Directive uh, that we should not interfere with uh, the primary users of a particular band. Uh, this is particularly true when, uh, in Europe where some of the bands are actually used for radio broadcast and uh, shortwave. So be mindful of the primary user as uh, we are the secondary user. 
So as uh, secondary users, we have to uh, yield to the primary users. Uh, so if uh, they, the primary user is causing interference with our contact, uh, it's up to us to move uh, you know, because we are the, the secondary user. Frequency allocations uh, kind of vary from uh, ITU region to, uh, for, to another. So what is permissible in region two may not be permissible in region one or three. Uh, so we just have to have a fundamental understanding of that. And uh, when operating in our, our region, you know, we can adhere by our rules. But if we travel and operate in others, we have to obey their rules. Earlier we discussed uh, that some of the frequencies were allocated for specific purposes. And uh, generally in the, the 10 meter band, it's, it's awful often used uh, for repeaters. Um, and we need to know that uh, from uh, 29.5 megahertz and above, uh, it could be a, you know, used by a repeater. So we don't want to interfere with the repeater operation. Uh, so now we're going to talk about some antenna structures, so some of the limitations, good engineering, uh, you know, what's a good practice, uh, a little bit about uh, beacons and uh, some of the prohibited types of transmissions and what we're allowed to retransmit. If your uh, zoning permits and you're not in a, a area where you have uh, building association, uh, you're allowed to have an antenna up to 200 feet without uh, registering it with the FAA. Um, however, you know, if you're near an airport, uh, that may not be the case. Uh, so if you have an air, uh, airport nearby, uh, before erecting such a thing, uh, you might want to investigate. Now, on this one, you notice the goose and the egg. So I kind of came up with a goose egg when I was investigating this question. Um, I want you to know that uh, a beacon station uh, should be coordinated or must be coordinated with the National Beacon Organization. But I did a Google search on, the, on it, and I couldn't find a National Beacon Association. So maybe there is one, but the only reference that I found to this was on the questions itself. I was able to find an international organization, and it's, uh, I found this map that shows uh, some of the beacons uh, in the uh, you know in the world that uh, you know is basically there for the purpose of uh, observing how good the propagation and the reception is on a on a given day. Yeah, one of the things we're allowed to uh, retransmit is occasionally is uh, the weather and the propagation forecast information uh, that comes from the United States government stations. Uh, so if you have a no weather radio, you're periodically uh, allowed to uh, retransmit the forecast, uh, particularly if a hurricane is on its way. Another transmission that uh, we're able to do is uh, that it uh, can assist with learning Morse code. Uh, Morse code is an interesting uh, uh, thing to learn. It's like learning a second language. Um, and there is actually an AARL uh, broadcast uh, and attached here is the schedule. You can also find it on the uh, website. And it's uh, interesting to learn. You know, amateur service co uh, communications uh, must be reasonably ac uh, accommodated. So <clears throat> this is particularly true in uh, the case of emergencies. Uh, so the uh, uh, Aries and, and Races, uh, you know, when, when they uh, appear on the air, uh, we should yield and let them do their thing. Uh, because in an emergency, our lives could depend on how well they could do their job. One of the things that we have to do is we have to be able to send our information in the clear and it can't be obscured, it can't be uh, uh, encoded or, or encrypted. Um, so, you know, some of the codes that are permittable are like the Q codes, uh, but we can't just make up our own code and, uh, and send it. Uh, that could uh, land you in a lot of trouble. 
you know, some of the things we're expected to do is, uh, you know, like ensure that the frequency mode is selected uh, is within uh, our class privileges. Uh, we need to follow the general accepted uh, band plans that are agreed to by the amateur radio community. And we need to monitor the frequencies uh, before transmitting. So in short, we need to be considerate and follow the rules. Talk about beacons, and there are certain frequencies uh, where be beacons are, are permitted. And a couple of these uh, that they expect us to know is the 28.2 megahertz to 28.3 megahertz are HF frequencies where automatically controlled beacons are permitted. And this can be found on the band plan page of the ARRL website. So the question uh, Gulf 1 Bravo 10 is actually a snippet from the uh, port 97 of the FCC rules. Uh, and it states clearly that 100 watts uh, peak envelope power output is the power limit for a beacon station. Part 97 also uh, determines what good engineering and good amateur practices uh, the definitions are uh, and how it's applied to the amateur stations uh, in respect to what is not covered by Part 97. So we're also uh, expected uh, to obey the rules of the international community and we're allowed to talk to uh, people in other countries, except uh, for those countries uh, that uh, have notified the ITU that they object to such communications. Uh, fortunately, countries even like North Korea don't object. Of course, people there can't get a radio. This concludes Lesson 1, Part 1. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. You're invited to subscribe to my channel so that you'll be notified uh, when the next of the series is released. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day in the amateur radio neighborhood. And until next time, never stop learning.